This is 2.6, day two. And today we're really going to get into graphing rational functions. The lesson previous to this was more about just identifying stuff about the graph. And now we're going to actually figure out all the things about the graph. So I'm going to be using that same blue card. I'm just going to be walking through each step one at a time. So hopefully you have your card right next to you so you know the steps. Um, but the first step is always to factor and cancel if we can. Remember that like a single one cannot cancel. You can't even cancel this x plus one because it's not protected in a parenthesis. So there's nothing here that can cancel. And since nothing cancels, that means there aren't any holes. Vertical asymptotes are found by taking the denominator and setting it equal to zero. So if I take x plus one, set equal to zero, I would get negative one. So that is my vertical asymptote at negative one. Next up is your horizontal asymptote. This is where is the highest power of x. And for this problem, they both have a power of 1. So that means they match. So then my job is to look at their coefficients. So these guys really don't mean anything to me for this. I'm only looking at the 2 and the 1. So that is my horizontal asymptote, which I mean 2 over 1 or just 2. Next up is a slant. This only happens if your numerator is bigger than your denominator. Well, if you just said they were the same for HA, then you can't come over to SA and say that one of them was bigger. So you don't have any of those. Um, you can write on your card even either you have an HA or you have an SA. You cannot have both of them. You cannot over here claim that they are you know, equal in power, but then come over here and say that the top was bigger in power. So you either have one of these or this one, never at the same time. Your x-intercept happens when you solve when the numerator equals 0. So I'll just take my numerator 2x plus 1, set that equal to 0, minus the 1 divided by 2 looks like my x-intercept is at negative half. So that would be negative half 0. That's my intercept. To find a y-intercept, we just plug a 0 in for all the x's. So if I did 2 times 0 plus 1 and a 0 plus 1. So this is 0. Looks like it's just 1 over 1. So my y-intercept is 0, 1. So we're going to go ahead and graph the function, and then we'll come back and do the domain and range. So I have my vertical asymptote. Oh, sorry. That was negative 1. I didn't put a negative 1 there. We graphed it right. I just didn't put the negative. Uh, horizontal asymptote is at 2. So let's go ahead and get that on there. Dotted line, because remember, these are asymptotes. So they're places where the graph cannot cross. So they're kind of like just these. Um, imaginary lines that we can't go over. Um, my x-intercept was at negative half and 0, so that would be right about there. My y-intercept was at 0, 1, so it's right about there. So that's nice. Those two are going to connect. And as soon as I try to like come at this asymptote, I'm just kind of forced away like two magnets. So they're super close, but they just don't quite touch. Same thing happens in this direction. I'll try and get close to it. Um, and that's the best I can do. Now we have to figure out the other half of this graph. I definitely know that it can't be on this side of the vertical asymptote because if I had any part of the graph up here, I wouldn't pass the VLT. I wouldn't be a function. So it's got to be on this half. So I'm going to pick anything less than negative 1. I'm just going to pick negative 2 for simplicity. And we're going to plug it in. So I'm just going to make me a mini XY chart. That's what I'm doing. I'm picking negative 2. You can pick any number out here. It doesn't really matter. Um, and I'm going to plug a negative 2 in to my function. So 2 times negative 2 plus 1, and then negative 2 plus 1 on the bottom. So I've got negative 4 plus 1, and on the bottom I've got negative 2 plus 1, and then cancel those out, I end up with 3. You're mainly just figuring out are you above or below the horizontal asymptote, where is your function. Uh, it makes total sense that we're above, so at negative 2 we got a 3, so it should be right here. If I was below here, uh, I would have to be touching the x-axis again, and I don't have another x-intercept to make that happen. So it's kind of a, also a giveaway that I had to be above the line. Otherwise, I wouldn't have matched what I found for x-intercepts. Um, again, had I th maybe thought that that was negative 3 instead, maybe I missed a negative. I can't have negative 2, negative 3, because there would be another portion of this graph that would cross the x-axis somewhere, but I didn't have another x-intercept. So I have my other portion of the graph had to be above the line, so it'll never touch again. So there's my function. Let's do the domain. Domain is going to be all real numbers, except if you ever have a VA, you can't be that. So we can't be negative 1. That's where my asymptote is. And if we had had any holes, it would also be those. But we didn't have any this time. So that's my domain. Range is also going to be all real numbers. 
except this time it's y can't be, and y for sure can't be any HAs, so this for us will be a two. And if there was a hole, holes again, we talked in the previous lesson, they have an x value and a y value, just like any normal point does, a hole would too. So you need to know the x, which would go here, and then you would need to figure out the y, which would go here. And we'll do one that's got a hole so that we can talk about what that looks like. Next one, again, I'm just gonna walk down the card. First up is factoring and canceling, <clears throat> x plus three. And then on the bottom, we're just gonna split this up. The only way to multiply, I shouldn't say that. There are several ways to multiply to 12, one and 12, two and six, three and four. Only one of those can get you to a one, and that's three and four. So it's gonna be plus three and then minus four. What's kind of nice about these two is you kind of have a hint about what the factor is gonna be because odds are something's gonna cancel. Um, so you can always at least try the plus three and see if that works out. What I do find for students is most of the time, kids will think they have it factored, but they won't check this to see if it works. So when you're done, especially on the test, take it off to the side and go, okay, if I think that this is truly the factor, then I should get x squared minus 4x plus 3x minus 12. And just make sure that that's what you actually started with, that you don't get something wildly different. Uh, so these will cancel. So my hole is actually gonna be at negative three. VAs, uh, remember once you factor and cancel, this is now what we're working with for the rest of the problem. We cannot come back here. So VAs are when the denominator equals zero. So I'm gonna set that equal to zero. Whoops, minus four equals zero. So my vertical asymptote is x equals four. Horizontal asymptotes happen where the highest power is. And so up here you technically have an x to the zero. So the bottom wins, so that means your horizontal asymptote is at zero. If you decided you had a horizontal asymptote, then you cannot have a slant, so you can cancel that one out. Your x-intercepts are when your numerator equals zero. Um, we can't set one equal to zero, that's not true. So there aren't any of those either. Y-intercept, plug a zero in for all the x's, so I'm gonna put a zero right there, which means it's gonna be negative one-fourth. And then let's graph it, and then we'll do our domain and range. So I've got a vertical asymptote at four. I've got a horizontal at zero. I've got a y-intercept at zero and then negative one-fourth, so right there. So that's the only dot I need for this half, because um, remember, you're just gonna try and get close to asymptotes. You're gonna come this way, and then this one's just gonna force you down to negative infinity. Um, so my other half needs to be over here. I have to check again because I don't know, it could be positive or it could be negative since I'm not crossing the x-axis. I don't get like an extra hint there. So I'm just gonna pick the number five and I'm gonna plug it in. So if I had plugged in a five, five minus four is one, one over one is one. So it looks like the graph is up here. All right, so let's do our domain. So domain's gonna be all real numbers except any VAs and holes, so both of those I need. Um, range is gonna be all real numbers. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, we didn't graph the hole. Let's go to negative three, and I worked in pen, which is really dumb, but there I'm just making an obnoxious hole at negative three. Remember, it's not on the axis, like I'm not on the x-axis, I'm wherever the function is. If we'd have had a hole at five, then I would have went up here and put a hole there. So a hole is kind of the last thing you graph, even though it's the first thing you find. Range is everything except horizontal asymptote, so zero. And then like I talked about in the one above, you have to have the y value that goes with your hole. So if I had plugged in a negative three, we're trying to figure out how far down is that point. So if I plug a negative three in there, negative three minus four is negative seven. So I've got negative one seventh. That is the other value I have to exclude. As a whole, it is a point, negative three, negative one seventh, and the x has to be excluded and the y has to be excluded. So if you have a whole, there has to be um, an x and a y value for that whole. So just moving up today by actually graphing them, that's usually the hardest part for kids. Make sure that you are following exactly what your card says to do for each single step.